Hello. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> the Mickey Mouse Productions, isn't it? Hello, everyone. It's John from Brisbane. And uh, apart from, obviously, a bit of self-grooming here. Uh, that'd be right. Now he wants to come down. Right. I'm back with the Mr. I'm having a whinge. Hang on, let me see if I can get him up a bit better. Oh, yes. It's amazing. I uh, tried to get him to come downstairs with me before I started this video, and uh, he wouldn't have anything to do with it. He was too busy having a good kip on the bed, weren't you? You having a good kip? Yes, Daddy says. I was having a very, very good kip. He said it was a good one. And he just turned his nose up. So I came down here, opened up, and started to... Uh, started my spiel. And of course, as you can tell I stopped I stopped my video and um, yes here he is aren't you hey so yeah so he heard of course he heard my voice as I started and gave a woof 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 I don't do a very good woof do I no I don't <laughs> I don't do a very good wolf. So there you go. There is my man again. Yes. Oh. Never says much. Not a very excitable dog, is he? Eh? But he's such a loved one. Yes, he is. He's such a loved little man. Anyone who follows me on Twitter or Instagram will see that it's littered with lots and lots of pictures. And uh, he is a really, really photogenic little chap. He really is, aren't you? No? Yes, he is. But anyway, we're here to talk about other things, much as I'd love to... I should almost do a... <laughs> just do a video about a certain little black and white dog, perhaps. But yes. Anyway, so what am I talking about today? Oh, quite a couple of things, I think. But um, look, going on from... Oh, God doing nothing except constantly sleeping, um, although that might be changing due to the fact that I uh, got some rather shocking news on Friday and uh, that's caused some uh, some rather radical, radical changes with me, so I don't know how that's going to uh, affect, how that's going to affect things, but uh, hey. Anyway, um, the books. Now, I think you will know that I posted a, uh, a video not that long ago about uh, a whole heap of uh, paranormal, urban fantasy, paranormal books. And uh, so I've actually found a few more <laughs> to add to the growing list, but oh dear, they're few and hard, hard to find. Mind you, of course, if you want paranormal romance... Ladies, you, well, I suppose gentlemen too. I think there's a few that fall into that category as well. Um, there's more than you can poke a stick at. Actually, when the last time I went to my local um, bookshop, second-hand bookshop dealer, um, I can remember years ago when she first started to, uh, to uh, get some of those books in. I think they only took up like two or three shelves. Now they've literally got, I think, two whole bookshelves. So two whole, you know, two whole columns of shelving dedicated to paranormal romance now. And, uh, yeah, so it just shows where, where a lot of the interest, where a lot of the interest is these days. So um, some of them I don't mind. Um uh, what's the, I think it's a series, I can't remember if, I think it might be the author's name is Faith Hunter, or is that the character's name, I can't remember, but uh, she's a uh, uh, shapeshifter, and uh, I think, I think a shapeshifter, yeah, I think she, yeah, she's a cat, and uh, yeah, it's, I didn't mind that, and, uh, and that, but not that I'm a prude, because hey, who doesn't say that they don't like sex, but um, I just don't, 
I find it distracting or detracting, I think, in, in novels. I don't mind if it's, you know, that if it's mentioned that, you know, oh, we toddle off to the bedroom or whatever. Um, but I don't think I really need to know the salacious details involved with um, with the act, act of sexual congress. What is it? I've forgotten. I don't get let out of my monastery cell very often these days. I think I might paint it duck egg blue. Needs a good change. But yes, anyway, forgive an old man and his meanderings and uh, insanity. Or perhaps is that longing? I don't know. But look, um, some get back on task, John. Back on task. Yes, some some new authors and some new books that may interest you. Now, uh, the author, Lindsay Barocca, or Barocca, uh, she has a series called Death Before Dragons, and uh, main character is a feminine, is oh, sorry, is female, uh, plays half-elf, and uh, she's a uh, an assassin for hire, shall we say, working for the working for the American government, hunting down rogue um, supernaturals that uh, are naughty people. Uh, yeah, but it's it's quite a uh, quite a good series. She's got a, a companion that she can summon through a charm that's a cat. And of course, I can hear everyone going, Ah, oh, Dritz! From, you know, um, the D&D uh, uh, &D world. You know, oh, it's a copy, it's a copy. It's this just set into another fantasy. Look, I really don't care. You know, the purists can say whatever they want. All I'm looking for is, is the book entertaining? Now, the series, I'm not sure how long the series is going for because I'm just getting them one at a time as I can afford to uh, to, to get them. But I've listened to the first two books and uh, I really do like them. And I particularly like um, the, the Vampire Alchemist. Um, I can't remember his name is Zoltar or Zoltan, um, but he's uh, an entrepreneurial um, wizard connected to the internet, and uh, I re his character is an absolute card. Honestly, uh, I really do. I really do like the wit that is uh, scattered throughout this throughout this book, and certainly the support cast. Because really, with a lot of books, unless the characters uh, have a lot of flesh that support the the plot as it goes through, you know, they're they're very very lackluster. So you know, Lindsay Barocca or Barocca, probably Barocca, I'd say. Um, once again, at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the uh, this. Uh, Little blog of mine. I'll have again the pictures of the of the book covers, so you'll be able to see how they how their what their spelling is and and the and the series. So that'll be you know quite good. Hopefully you'll be able to find that. Now, M R Forbes has got a series, and good on you, John. You didn't even write it down, but there's a, I believe it's a necromancer series. I've only just found this one. Uh, I think it was on special through uh, eKindle. And of course, as I said, I'm always looking for WhisperSync where you can pick up the book and the audio basically for cheaper than just getting the audio on its own. So uh, I've yet to have a look at it. The concept looked really interesting in the fact that the chap's a necromancer. And uh, so I'll probably have more to say about that perhaps in the future. Now, Brad... Magnarella, who I talked about in the previous one, has got another series called Blue Wolf. And it's set in the same, I guess, universe as the Prof Croft series. And uh, that's the uh, Everson Croft, uh, the wizard or mage or whatever you'd like to perhaps call him. And uh, this chap's obviously a, um, well, I suppose... Permanently cursed werewolf, perhaps not a werewolf, wolfman, blue bird. But I've listened to the first book. Now, this was a real big deviation from his Prof Croft 
books in the fact that it was more all military style um, engagements throughout the book. Uh, well, there was to me it seemed to be more military engagements and uh, and stuff like that, which uh, I guess I wasn't really too sure about. But to be honest, there was enough of the paranormal. Um, happening within the novel that it outweighed the, I guess, the, the over um, the overly intricate or not so much intricate, but you know the, the over military theme that I thought that was within the, uh, the book itself so it looks to be an interesting series, I think it only goes for five, uh, five books but I quite liked the um, the look of it. So, see how that one goes. Uh, what else have we got? Steve Curry has got a series called Valhalla Absent Without Leave, AWOL. And <clears throat> he's one of the uh, you know, one of the Vikings called the Val, you know, I, once again, <clears throat> it's taking a bit to piece the information as to just who this character is. I think he's an Ein Einhof or something like that. Well, forgive me if I've butchered that. But anyway, apparently he's one of the fallen warriors that goes to um, goes to Valhalla and serves in um, Odin's, Odin's Hall. I can't quite remember now. But anyway, he for whatever reason, is just apparently constantly tortured by this one Valkyrie. And um, he manages to escape into the real world, our world, shall we say. And he leads a, hopefully, well, up until <laughs> up until this time, um, unobserved um, existence. And he gets drawn, and the story gets starts to you know uh, evolve from there there's a murder and it's a mystery as to who's who's killed this person it's got supernatural elements and you get introduced I really like this officer Jackson chap who has been introduced oh, it's okay has been introduced as one of the characters so uh, I finished the first book and um, I had trepidations at one stage but officer Jackson is still well, I hope he's still with us. He certainly is by the end of the book, so I won't say any more. But I did enjoy the book. Now, bear in, bear in mind, people, um, these are all... Uh, I've got these all as uh, books and audios. So I've done the listen. And so they are really, really good, in my opinion. Now, the next one is by a... Uh, by an author called uh, Mark Hayden. And his series is called Conrad Clark. Now, he's a uh, retired... Or, yeah, I guess it's retired. Yeah, you retire when you... Or discharged. Yeah, discharged, I suppose. He's finished his service. He's left the RAF. And um, he has been contacted by Odin Allfather and contracted um, to go work for him. And uh, ah, look, honestly, uh, he gets to meet this giant mole in the, uh, in the uh, British underground. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really good. I, you know, just the things that are within there that I find uniquely interesting, you know, and he makes friends with this mole. This giant 10-foot, I think it's about a 10-foot mole or something. I can't quite remember what its dimensions are, but it's huge. And he, he decides, you know, he says, oh, you may call me, the mole says, you can call me mole. And he says, oh, look. in the end, he decides to call him Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor Mole, Lord Mayor Mole of Moles. Yeah, I think that's what he calls him. But it's quite a good novel. And, uh, of course, you know, Her Majesty's Government has its own, uh, you know, supernatural 
enforcement wing. And uh, it's looking to be very interesting. And the author has started with his uh, first book being uh, Starts at 13 and is making its way down to number one. So I can't remember what the first one's called. 13 something like, it might be 13. Yeah, 13 Witches, I think it might be called. And then it's the next one's 12 something or other, and then 10. And I quite like that concept that, you know, he's gone, he's counting down. So he's obviously doing, you know, he's obviously planned this series out quite well. And I really like the character because, you know, this um, the Cl uh, Conrad, you know, one of the things, you know, he says, you know, am I the sort of character that would shoot a fleeing opponent in the back? Damn right I am. And, you know, when I, you know, I'm there reading through this and some other things and I'm there going, yeah, you know, real people would do that. You know, there's none of this business of honour, you know, of, of chivalry if your life's at stake, particularly when you're sort of dealing with these sort of people, or, you know, entities within this concept. And it's a, uh, it is, I, you know, I've read, read, listened to the first book and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now, the uh, next one I've got is Angela Roquette. Um, and it's a series called Lana Harvey Reapers Incorporated. Now, I picked this one up on a whim due to the fact that uh, I think it might have been like a 99 cent purchase on e-Kindle. And uh, well, it may not have been that low. It might have been like $2.99 or something. And uh, you also got the... Um, oh dear, now my phone's going to bleep at me. And uh, so you got that and, uh, and the audio, obviously. So it's sitting on my back burner. I think there were three books, three, four books, I think, for the for such a cheap price. And I thought, well, it looked like an interesting concept, um, which, of course, I haven't written down here. But it looked interesting, and I thought, well, bugger it. I'll give it a go. And it's on my list of, of books. But it caught my, caught my opinion. This was also the next one, too. But you can see what I do in the evening. Like, I'm sitting upstairs with the wife watching television. Or she's watching television, and I'm just browsing through my through my tablet looking through e-kindle going oh yeah this is an interesting looking book right I'll, I'll i'll put that down as the next one i'm thinking about getting um because god it's hard geez i wish e-kindle had a better search engine in there you know considering how much they probably spend and make you'd think that they could afford a better search engine uh then the next one was domino finn is the author and his series is black magic outlaw and Look, honestly, I can't remember. Cannot even remember what it's about, this one. But I think it was a cheap one, and I thought, well, bugger it, I'll get it and see what it's like. It intrigued me with its with its title, so I thought, we'll give it a go. Now, the other one that I'm rather hooked on, uh, like a few of the others, um, uh, like Harbinger... P.I. and the Cunning Man series by, I can't remember, his Underwood, Underwood author. Uh, this one here by M.D. Massey, which is the Colin McCool series. Um, probably might be better known as the Junkyard Drill. Uh, I really do like it so far. I think that it handled uh, it's more in context with the Celtic um, mythology style of things um, I don't know if people are familiar with Kevin Hearn's um, Iron Druid series but he's he's all over the place with his stuff with bringing in Norse and all the other deities as, as well uh, so uh, that was about, I guess, the only disappointing thing I found with Kevin Hearn. But M.D. Massey does tend to stick with the, with the Irish, um, Irish or Celtic fae, and he does that quite well, in in my opinion. And uh, the Colin McCool uh, series looks quite well. I think I'm three books into that, 
and um, he has, um, I guess, the best thing I can probably, you know, reading it and looking at it, it reminds me very much of um, the early, in the early 2000 AD comics, there was a character called Slain, and he would have these warp spasms where he would channel the spirit, you know, the, the, the power of the Earth Goddess through his body, and his body would warp and spasm into misshapen, um, you know, um, oversized body parts, you know, become a giant, uh, which the Fomorians were, um, were supposedly to be. And uh, apparently this is what uh, McCool uh, supposedly has running or is cursed with, is this uh, Fomorian uh, bloodline. So, uh, yeah, it, I quite like it. And uh, the support characters that are in there. Look, honestly, hey, how many times do you see a Maori as a uh, as a character within a you know within a uh, within a fantasy series? Uh, you know, hey, look, I'm here in Australia, and I don't you know they have Australians occasionally in in others, but how often do you see a Maori? And I must admit. I can't say that I've ever seen an Aboriginal, an Australian Aboriginal, as a as a character in uh, in any novels, to be honest. Um, so, uh, but yeah, it's um, I quite like this. So, M. D. Massey uh, is quite good. So, they are. Well, that's interesting. For the short few that I did there, I've rambled on more about those than I have about the others. So that is those. Right, so what else am I going to ramble on about? Well, I've had a few more games added to the game library, of which I still sort of shake my head considering that my capacity to get any games is... Yes, yes. I think I might as well go back to my uh, back to my monastery cell and con continue to paint it duck egg blue. Yes, I wonder if I should paint the bar cells, the cell bars. No, I think they need to remain a nice solid iron. I think I don't think you know, there needs to be a little bit of um, contrast. I think within the uh, within the cell itself. But what did I pick up? My good friend Paul from the Emperor's Legions. Uh, had and finally got in uh, was oh, here we go is uh, the Fountain of Youth. Now I know this has been out for a while, but um, I just haven't had the I guess the the spare cash to be able to get it. Now I must admit, for what it contains, it really is a rather expensive um, purchase. But look, to be honest, I I really don't begrudge giving my money to Paul because he's a small independent operator. And uh, I like to support my friends. And uh, so, yeah, this Fountain of Youth is uh, is quite good. Adds quite a few more elements, I think, three, four. So I'm looking forward to giving that one there a try. Yeah, sometime in the future when I feel motivated enough to, yeah, to get there. Now, the other thing uh, I, must I must thank now another friend, Mark from Games World, um, Capalabar and Carindale. Yes, they've got two shops now. And uh, I picked up this one, Under Falling Skies, which I've noticed uh, a fair bit of uh, traffic and, and news about. <clears throat> I've yet to give this one here a try. I like it because I can, well, basically it is a solo game. So it's Space Invaders. Space Invaders. So, looking forward to giving that one there a try in due course. So, I thank you very much, Mark, for that. Uh, I much appreciate your generosity there. Now, the other thing that I picked up when I was in there, and again, ooh, thank you very much, Mark, um, that you got in. Um, it's, honestly, it's getting harder and harder to find Hopefully, Australia, hopefully, will eventually start to get decent stock levels back through. Um, and uh, I guess my 
choice of games will improve a bit, but uh, yeah, who knows. But I picked up this one. Welcome to Dino World. Got really excited, opened it up, and then found I had two pads for light mode instead of one light mode and one danger mode. So I'm rather grumpy. <laughs> I'm incredibly grumpy. Especially when I went looking around thinking, oh, surely, bloody, the company would have a download file for the for the uh, for the maps uh, so you know for the uh, for the pads but no of course not because they've got to make money selling pads I suppose and she didn't and she didn't even go look for that I was only looking for downloads and not even board game geek has a copy of the uh, of the uh, of a blank map so a very sad puppy at this stage uh, but hopefully I've got one page, <laughs> one blank page coming. So uh, I will uh, have that fall on my printer. Oh, sorry, on my scanner, and I'll just get six of those, six of those done and laminated because that's all I'll do with these. I I never use the uh, the pads. I just like with a couple of the other roll and writes that I've got. I think I only. Like I'll tear off six of the six of the sheets, and I'll laminate them, and then I use uh, you know uh, whiteboard whiteboard markers, white you know the dry erase types, and because um, I find that they're far easier to uh, to work with than than pencils and rubbing out. So uh, I don't know why companies just don't go for you know producing their uh, you know these roll and writes don't do them in that format but then I guess hey we want to make continue to make money out of people by selling additional pads so I guess that's that's business so they are the games that uh, I have picked up this week which is all really really good Right, and I guess ending on the last is, I guess, for me, um, yeah, a sad, a sad note for me is that uh, I've had the extreme good fortune of having had one doctor in my life for, I would think, probably close to 30 years, probably longer. Maybe as long as Michelle and I have been married, maybe 35. I can't quite remember. Maybe not 35. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but certainly, um, certainly 30, I think. But uh, yeah, so I got the, uh, the sad news uh, on Friday that uh, you know, that she intends to uh, to retire. So, I've now got to go try and find myself another, another doctor. Yeah, it's a scary world. A very scary world, particularly when you become so accustomed to one doctor who knows, you know, who's looked after you so well. Um, she looked after, you know, she saw my children from birth to the age they are now, so considering that my eldest is is 25, so um, you know she's seen you know the birth and growth of two of my two children, um, you know is a uh, is a bit of a milestone for us. So it's it's sad, it's sad. So. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be very. I get for for me, it's going to be traumatic because I have a number of uh, a number of health issues, and to find another doctor that can give the level of um, of uh, healthcare compassion and um, and devotion that she has given me over these many many years I think is going to be really really difficult and uh, to say that I'm not coping uh, is an understatement so uh, 
yeah, so it's a uh, it's a sad a sad time at the moment. But yeah, so that's where my personal my personal life is at the moment. So yeah. Anyway, hello. Are you going to say goodbye? He's going to disturb him. He's not going to like this. Hello. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. I said, Dad, I don't like being disturbed. Do you? You're having a big. He was having a big sleep. He curled up. See, I sleep on this couch here, and a certain, certain little lad just curls up on top of me, and like we'll we'll nap five times during the day, and uh, and so about the only thing that'll wake me up is if uh, if somebody goes by, and of course he decides to uh, he <laughs> he decides to get up. So I'll get his, uh, I'll get two big back paws right on my groin. So if, i tell you what, that does wake a person up. I'll tell you that much. Don't you? Don't you wake me up. Hey? He says, Dad, he says, you need to be woken up at times, don't I? Hey, do I need to be woken up? Yes, I know. All right, well, look, it's uh, it's goodbye from me. And not going to yawn today? My, uh, I had to mention it, didn't I? And it's goodbye from him. So, till next time, signing off, the Honourable John.